222 runs against Tamim 11 in match of BCB President Cup Cricket. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to News at 10 on BTV, BTV World and BTV Chattogram Center. I am Roya Zabin. You have just heard the headlines and now moving on to details. Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina has once again urged the countrymen to use masks while coming out of the houses to prevent possible second wave of COVID-19. She made the call while presiding over a regular cabinet meeting today. Prime Minister joined the meeting through digital platform from Gonu Bhabon. After the meeting, Cabinet Secretary Khandukar Anwarul Islam briefed the reporters at the Secretariat. He said government has already instructed the Deputy Commissioners to take measures, including conducting mobile courts and awareness campaign to ensure use of masks by the masses. The Cabinet Secretary said government has favoured to raise a slogan, Please don't enter without mask in case of getting access to any public place. He said Prime Minister also urged the mass media to play an effective role to increase awareness among the people to use masks. Cabinet Secretary said at the meeting, Cabinet approved the draft of air services agreement to be signed between the Austrian federal government and the government of the People's Republic of Bangladesh. He said the Cabinet was also apprised of the visit of Bangladesh delegation to Ankara, led by Foreign Minister on the occasion of inauguration of newly built embassy in Ankara of Turkey. The 33rd span of the 6.15 km long Podda Bridge was installed on the 3rd and 4th pillars at the Mawa end today. With the installation of the span, 4,900 meters of the main structure of the mega bridge has become visible. On October 11, the 32nd span of Podda Bridge was installed. According to Podda Bridge Authority, the 6.15 km long Podda Bridge with a total of 41 spans will become visible in December and the entire Podda Bridge will be seen by the beginning of 2021. The newly appointed Indian High Commissioner to Bangladesh, Vikram Kumar Dorai Swami, has made a courtesy call on Speaker Dr. Shirin Sharmin Chaudhary at her office in Dhaka today. During the call on, they discussed various bilateral issues, including parliamentary activities, formation of parliamentary friendship group, trade and commerce, education and culture. Speaker Dr. Shirin Sharmin Chaudhary said relations between Bangladesh and India is on sound footing and friendly. Recalling the Indian cooperation during the liberation war of Bangladesh in 1971, the speaker said India is not only a neighbor but also a trusted friend of Bangladesh. The Indian High Commissioner said India laid much importance on developing relationship with Bangladesh. He said Bangladesh is ahead of many South Asian countries in various fields, including elimination of poverty and empowerment of women. Awami League, Joint Gen Awami League General Secretary Obadul Kadeh has warned that the BNP will be resisted with the help of people if the party tries to jeopardize peacefulness of the society by announcing programs against the mandates of people. He said it was BNP's failure that it could not understand the language of people's desire. He was briefing journalists at his official residence today. Obadul Kadir said the government has been working relentlessly to institutionalize the democracy of the country alongside strengthening it. He went on to add that the government involved people in taking decisions. The Awami League General Secretary said BNP is beating Bush regarding the recent bipoles. It is now a daily routine of BNP to make falsehoods and stand against any issue, Obadul Kadir added. <laughs> Shoktishali Koronel Pashapashi, Pratishtani Group Dane Nidolosh Kaskuche, Sidanto Grahon Pokria, Shambikto Karahuche, Jonogonke, Monotonte, Motopartiko Thagbe, Chekuno Bishwe di Mot, Bohumot Thagbe, Bitorko Thagbe, Shunidris to Isute, Bitorko Igonotonte Pran. Dimon Gonotonte Sondurjo. Asole Bien Pikija Tara Nijero Janana. Kuno Isute Tarastino 
তাই তাদের কর্মী সমর্থকরাও বিভ্রান্ত নেতৃত্বের ব্যর্থতা দিন দিন তাদেরকে জনপ্রত্যাশা থেকে ছিটকে দিচ্ছে মাঠের রাজনীতিকে তারা নিয়ে গেছে ফেসবুকের মাধ্যমে সোশ্যাল নেটওয়ার্কে রাজপথ আর তাদের রাজনীতির নির্ধারক নয় তাদের রাজনীতি এখন বহু দূর থেকে ইঠারে ভেসে আসে জনগণের চোখের বাসা মনের বাসা বুঝতে না পারাই বিএনপির ব্যর্থতা জনরায়ের বিরুদ্ধে বিএনপি কর্মসূচি দিয়েছে যে কোনো শান্তিপূর্ণ কর্মসূচি পালনে কোনো বাধা সরকার দিবে না কিন্তু কর্মসূচির নামে জনগণের শান্তি ও স্বস্তি নষ্ট করলে জনগণকে সাথে নিয়ে আওয়ামী লীগ তা প্রতিহত করবে A virtual views sharing meeting on rehabilitation of land and homeless people was held at Prime Minister's office in the capital today. Prime Minister's Principal Secretary Dr. Ahmed Kaikos chaired the meeting. All divisional and deputy commissioners took part at the meeting through video conference from their respective places. Secretary to the Prime Minister's office Mia Mohammad Tofazal Hussein and concerned officials also took part at the meeting. The meeting discussed various issues including proper selection of land and homeless people, provide two decimals of government land and necessary money to build home for them and complete the home within three months. Prime Minister's Principal Secretary Dr. Ahmed Kaikos urged all concerned to work sincerely for implementing the project with a view to ensure home for all people across the country during Muji Borsho, which is a pledge of Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina. আমরা বাংলাদেশের স্বাধীনতার সুফল ভোগকারী একদম ডাইরেক্ট সুফল পাচ্ছি যারা জনপ্রতিনিধি নির্বাচিত হয়েছেন তারাও এবং যারা আজকে আমরা সরকারি চাকরি পেয়েছি তারাও অতএব আমাদের মাটির কাছে আমাদের কিছু দায় আছে সেই দায় পরিশোধ করার একটা সুযোগ এসেছে আমরা ইনশাল্লাহ মাননীয় প্রধানমন্ত্রীর এই যে স্বপ্নটা বাস্তবায়ন করব এটা যদি করতে পারি তাহলে আমরা মনে করবো আমাদের পাবলিক সার্ভিসের আপনারা যারা জনপ্রতিনিধি আছেন এবং আমরা যারা আছি আমরা কিন্তু সবাই পাবলিক সার্ভিসের সঙ্গে জড়িত এই পাবলিক সার্ভিসটা সার্থক হবে A tribunal in Bagerhat sentenced Abdul Mannan Shardar to life in October 11. The judge on Sunday heard the arguments of the lawyers from both sides, the plaintiff and the defendant in the case. The court then fixed today for announcing the verdict. 21 COVID-19 patients died in the last 24 hours in the country, increasing the death toll from the pandemic to 5,681. The recovery count rose to 3,5,599 after another 1,627 recovered during the period. A press release of the Directorate General of Health Services said today, it said the tally of infections has surged to 3,90,206 with 1,637 new cases being confirmed. Now international news. Millions of Europeans are facing tough new coronavirus restrictions as governments try to combat spiraling infections. Italy has announced a new raft of measures to tighten restrictions amid a surge in coronavirus cases. Prime Minister Giuseppe Conte said the measures were needed to avoid a new lockdown. Under the new restrictions, mayors will get power to close public areas after 9 p.m. and the opening time of restaurants and the size of groups allowed will tighten. In Paris and several other French cities were facing the start of a 9 p.m. to 6 a.m. curfew. In the United Kingdom, restrictions are being ramped up with bans on indoor meetings between members of different households in London and several other English cities. German Chancellor Angela Merkel has urged citizens to stay home whenever possible. A mandatory citywide mask rule was implemented and President Hassan Rouhani announced fines for people and businesses who fail to adhere to the rules.
An Indian scientific panel has said the onset of winter and upcoming festivals could lead to a significant rise of up to 2.6 million coronavirus cases a month if the rules in place to check the spread of the disease are relaxed. Meanwhile, COVID-19 global death toll crosses 11 lakh 19,000 with more than 4 crore 3 lakh 92,000 people infected. More than 3 crore 1 lakh 71,000 people have recovered so far. Saudi Arabia is allowing its citizens and residents inside the kingdom to perform daily prayers at the Grand Mosque in Mecca, the holiest site in Islam, for the first time in seven months. Sunday also marked the start of the second phase of the gradual return of citizens and residents to performing the Umrah to the holy cities of Mecca and Medina, undertaken any time of the year, expanding the capacity to 75%. Starting November 1, the Kingdom will allow visitors from specific countries deemed safe to perform Umrah at 100% of the revised capacity. Now news on sports. Mahmudullah 11 are now batting with a victory target of 222 runs against Tamim 11 in the President's Cup cricket tournament in Mirpur. Mahmudullah's team scored 184 runs for four wickets in 42 overs when report last came in. Earlier, Tamim 11 batted first and scored 221 runs for eight in their stipulated 50 overs. Yasi Ali Rabbi scored 62 runs, while Mahidul Islam Onkon scored 57 runs for the team. Rubel Hussain bagged four wickets for Mahmudullah's team. Before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina urges countrymen to ensure wearing masks to thwart corona onslaught. Four thousand nine hundred meters of Padda Bridge gets visible with installation of thirty third span. BNP will face public wrath if party tries to distort peace and tranquility through programs against people's verdict, warns Obaidul Kadir. Prime Minister's office holds video conference with divisional and district administrations on implementing rehabilitation project for homeless in Mujibia. Timely completion of program stressed. One gets life imprisonment for child rape in country's first ever court verdict within seven working days. Holy Mecca opens for regular prayers after seven months recess for Corona as Europe imposes strict restrictions to battle soaring caseload of COVID-19. And Mahmudullah 11 chasing a victory target of 222 runs against Tamim 11 in match of BCB President Cup Cricket. That's all from the newsroom for the moment. Thank you for staying with us.